caught. Can it catch? Where I try different kinds of baits. Usually the people suggest in the comments to see what crabs like the best. I always stack it up against what I'm using for bait, typically shrimp heads or fish as a control group to see if they truly do catch better. We've tried all kinds of things. Last time on Can It Catch, you guys suggested chicken neck, squid, a fish bomb, corn steak for crab bait. You name it, I've tried it. All kinds of different results. So for the season finale of Can It Catch, we have 13 different fish species and different kinds of bait that we're gonna try in a shootout. We had a freeze full of all the fish that we were gonna eat. The power went out and so all the fish went bad. Instead of just throwing away, we're gonna put in pots in one row and we're gonna see which bait catches crabs the very best. Everybody says crabs are scavengers and will eat anything. I don't think it's true. I think crabs are a little pickier than most people think. We have a zip tie with the species of fish written on the zip tie that we're gonna put on the crab pot in case the crabs eat all of them. One and a half inches wide by two inches tall. Pretty much all the crab pots are like that. I'm trying to keep them as similar as possible so we get the most accurate test results here. So for the first one, we're gonna use shrimp heads. This has been our control group for Kennet Catch, and this has overall been the best catching thing that we've used in all the series. You guys buy the tails at the grocery store, I buy all the rest. I buy them about 2,800 pounds at a time, and I use about 300 pounds a day for bait. One of these crab pots. So for the next pot, we're gonna put rainbow trout. This is a freshwater fish, and this is a stocked one out of a pond. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Oh, this is not a fish found in the bay, so crabs may be a little surprised to see rainbow trout down there, but hey, fish eat worms. Never seen an earthworm in the bay either. All right, for the next pot, we have the most eaten fish possibly in the entire world. This is called a pollock. If you've eaten any fish sticks or anything like that, You've probably tried pollock. Pretty sure like McDonald's fish fillets are made out of pollock as well. So the next one we have chicken of the woods. This is a mushroom that I guess grows all over the place. A lot of people that are vegetarians eat this as a meat substitute. So we're gonna see, do crabs like this as well? I don't know, I'm not so convinced. Constantly wrong about half the things I think I'm right about. Next fish we got is a Spanish mackerel. It's a really oily fish. Crabs do tend to like that because it sticks around and kind of makes a slick through the water and they can smell it. Next bait we have is called a cunner. Now, this is a fish from Maine. Look at that. Look at those teeth on that thing. That is kind of disgusting. It's kind of like people teeth. It kind of looks like it's looking at me. Kind of looks like an Oscar, although it's definitely an ocean fish. See if crabs like that, they probably never even seen one of those. I had never seen one before today. The next one is a real bummer. Cobia is a delicious fish. They get giant. They're actually, I think, closely related to catfish, but they have become really, really popular to fish for in the past few years. Let's see how Cobia stacks up. The next bait we got is a speckled trout. It's one of my favorite fish to eat and catch. These are actually native to the bay, so the crabs will probably be familiar with this kind of fish. So the next fish we have is a mackerel. They call this like a Boston mackerel sometimes. It's not the same as the Spanish mackerel. These are native to waters all up and down the East Coast. Hugely popular for bait fish. They use these for tuna. Pretty much everything eats mackerel. Super oily fish, pretty nasty. Ugh. The next bait we got is classic chicken necks. Pretty much everybody recreationally uses crabbing in the bay. Put these on trout lines, they put these on strings and throw them off the piers. Everybody has a story about catching crabs on chicken necks. People will tell me in the comments when I'm not catching crabs that I need to try chicken. We've tried chicken necks in the pots a lot of times before. You're gonna have to wait and find out the result. What I think is gonna be the best bait, this is fresh rockfish. This is one that we caught the other day. It was 26 and a half inches, which is above the legal limit and also below the max size that you can keep. I think crabs like fresh cut bait the best, and this also has some of the guts in there. The next bait we have is blue catfish. These are getting progressively more unpleasant the longer they sit here in the sun. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. The invasive species here in the bay that has gotten a lot worse and they eat a lot of crabs. Probably like one side of one catfish. These things get absolutely massive. They're actually delicious to eat. That's so gross. <laughs> All right, so for our very last one, we have a little bit of everything that was left in the bottom of the freezer. I don't even know what unspeakable, disgusting things are in here. I really couldn't tell you. I'm not sure I have the stomach to uh, investigate a whole lot further. Oh, that's awful. Oh no, I've done it now. These are eel pots. These are what we use in the Chesapeake Bay here to catch American eels. Mostly all go to the Asian market, but I am just curious to see what we're gonna catch. Peeler crabs for bait are showing signs of turning into a soft crab. If you peel them open, they have a soft crab shell underneath. You can see they were gonna shed out. These are what they use for bait. 
for fish a lot. Eels also love them. Every time we get a peeler run, I get eels in my crab pots trying to eat my peeler crabs. So the bait goes right in there and the eels swim past it and gets trapped here in the back. We are gonna set these crab pots in one continuous line. So they're all gonna be attached to the same line with maybe the exception of two. I'm gonna put them right next to the rest of them. I'm hoping I can find a spot that has some crabs. I'm gonna pick some bottom that I know usually has crabs this time of year. I also drug along my wife, Lindsay, and her sister, Lily. Hi. So when you lay an underwater line, like what we're gonna about to do right here, half mile long line, there's a lot of other guys out here that also have a lot of half mile long lines. You kind of have to know how all the other lines run in order to not lay over top of each other. Luckily, the guys that are working out here, I know pretty well, one of them is CJ, Cap YouTube. You can check his channel out, I'll tag it below. He's got a lot of gear out here, so I know how his stuff works. Everybody has a hawk on each end. Every hawk has a flag to mark the north and the south side of a row, figure out how to lay a row without laying over top of anybody else. That flag I can tell is CJ's, it's yellow and white. That means it's a north end, that is the key bridge right there. So I know if I start north of his north hawks, I could run a row dead north and not lay over top of him. Throw that over. We're gonna put our first pot, chicken of the woods, mushrooms. Oh, see what we can't catch in one of these eel pots. This one we got cobia. Mostly acrylics on the crab pot. Really grown out. Blue catfish. Which bait do you think that is? I can't read your ring. What is it? I think it's a fish called a cutter. <laughs> Chicken necks. Speckled trout. We got rockfish. The Atlantic mat. The last pot on the string. So we got our pot with shrimp heads. <laughs> Last pot of the day, the, the bottom of the freezer. Where's my speedometer? Uh, Lick your finger, stick it out the window, see how fast you're going. Six knots, huh? Yeah. So last time on Kenny Kent, you guys suggested I bring Nick along with me. So we are out here for the season finale of Kenny Kent. All right, look at this. This is the first pot. This had chicken of the woods mushrooms for bait, and we actually called it crab. So this pot had pollock in it. We got two crabs, a male and a female. And look oh, at this. Is that a fake stingray? Oh, dude, I thought stingray. it was a real stingray. I, know. <laughs> I was like, yes. Captain CJ returned the fake stingray. Had me for a second, I'm not gonna lie. Coming up, it was flopping. I actually thought it was real. Rainbow trout, one crab. Exotic baits are not doing it for me. Not ate up much. I must not have liked that. So we had Spanish mackerel on this bait. So far, high pot of the day. We got three crabs. Not killing it. For this pot, we had cobia's bait. They do not like cobia. So we're pulling up an eel pot right now. Dude, look Ooh, at those eels. We hit the honey hole. Look at that. Wow, look at those there are things. so many eels. They're like spaghetti in there. Yeah, look at that. Those are some big eels, too. That is awesome. Dude, sweet, sweet catch. <gasps> They're getting out of the box. Oh my god. They're like snakes, dude. dude. I know. Are there holes in the boat? Bro, this is impossible. I know, dude. Oh eels are about the slimiest thing you could ever try to get. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. This thing is not getting caught. Oh my god. Bro, this is nuts. I'm telling you, you really cannot grab it. No. <laughs> I've been trying to pick up this eel for like a minute now. Okay, you're grabber. <laughs> we got him. We got the daddy crab in this That's one. Big one. On this can of catch pot, we have blue cat as bait. We call one crab. That's a big one. That's awesome. That's bigger than any crab I've seen. That's a nice big crab. He's lively too. He has beautiful claws. Yeah, he does. That's a pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty one. Right. He's grabbing by this back fin like that. That's the best one to hold. Don't grab Dude, him like that. My hands are so slippery from the eels, bro. Yeah, I bet. God, that hurts so bad. Ain't no bad. Bro, this kind of catch pot. We had cutter, which is a fish from Maine. We got two crabs, two nice crabs. That's a nice big pretty male there. Rusty belly crab, right there. That's a nice one. I like that I wanted to We had chicken as bait, which is everybody's favorite. Look at that. Once again, chicken did not perform. We caught a jellyfish with one crab. Speckled trout for bait. It okay. I, the oily fish are tending to do a little bit better. For this kind of catch pot, we got rockfish. I'm actually surprised that the rockfish didn't do better. That was my bet for the best catch of bait. One crab. 
I've been bummed out about these pops so far. We really have not had too much. So this kind of catch pot with Atlantic mackerel is big. I'm telling you, these more oily fish are doing a lot better. Check that thing out, dude. That thing's huge. That's a big crab. Look, he's pinching the pincher of the other pincher. So for this kind of catch pot, we had shrimp three crabs. Nothing spectacular. For this kind of catch pot, we got the bottom of the freezer. Two crabs. He said, if I'm going down, you're coming That's down right. with me. For the last pot, for the Can It Catch finale, we have our classic control group, which is shrimp heads. It's been hard to beat shrimp heads all year. We are going to see right now how it stacks up against all the other 12 random fish we tried. Oh, oh dude, look at that. that. Dude, I'm telling you, shrimp heads is the reigning champion. It is hard to beat shrimp heads. The only bait we've had all year that's come close to beating shrimp heads has been jellyfish, believe it or not. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten crabs in the shrimp head pot. This is why I use shrimp heads as crab people.